G'day all, I'm Graham Sanders and I live at Townsville, North Queensland. That's where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. You're looking at a plastic esky, small thing, holds about a six pack. And you can see a pipe at the front. And I'm going to discuss the method of propagation that works really well for Hocking's eyes. And that's the brood lift method. Now it's very early morning, so the hive is not even operating. So firstly, what is the brood lift method and how do you know it's successful? Or proof of it, that is. I, I say it works, but you want to see proof. This is a brood lift I did two months ago. It's been successful because I see bees leaving the entry of this hive carrying hatched brood waste and when you see that after two months you know you've been successful why two months well for a hocking's eye the egg to hatching if you like of the adult is 50 days so if you've got brood waste coming out at 60 days you don't have to be a mass whiz to work out that that has to be fresh brood. So what is the brood lift method? Give you something a bit more interesting to look at as I talk. The brood lift method involves going to a hive like this one, a nice healthy hive. Whoops, there we go. Beautiful and healthy and it's first thing in the morning so you can see how healthy it is. There's actual bees leaving before the sun's up. And you take an extremely small amount of brood, about golf ball size, and you surgically remove that from the hive. You don't disturb the brood any more than that. You just find a loose bit on the side and remove it. And you don't touch the stores, you don't damage the hive. In fact, the hive really doesn't know it's missing that little golf ball bit size of brood. And then you also need some stores and a place to put it. In the brood lift method, you could use anything, an old box that had previously had bees in it like this, or you could just use an esky. A small esky will do the job just as uh, well. You place that brood in there. You don't worry about any extra bees or anything like that. Just that brood in there. There'll be bees on that that will set the hive off. And you place only about one or two pollen pots. That's all in there. I have them stored in the freezer. So you have some food source. Only one or two pollen pots. And you put that in. And that is it. You just leave the hive go. You may have to feed the bees something. And if you do, very little. And the colony grows from there. You hear a lot of people tell you that you need heaps of brood, heaps of stores to get a colony started. I'm here to show you, no you don't. So, as I said, this is very early morning. There's the lid of the esky, just ripped off now. Let's look inside. And I'm hopeful the light's good enough. This is a successful brood lift. Look at the stores that they've built up in here. If the light's bad, well, so be it. This is when I do my inspections. You don't get flying bees around. Heaps of brood has been recruited. Hopefully you can see that. More importantly, look at my brood there. I've got heaps of new brood. In other words, the hive is quite alive and it's powering on. Look at the honey. That's honey stores over this side. Heaps of honey. The hive has propagated. It's got a queen. It's all good. Over this side, that is a resin processing area where they bring resin in and they process it for the hive. You've got another spot down on this side here at the back. So as you can see in this hive, 
This is a quite a successful brood lift. In fact, a very typical one. I might even put a picture of another one at the end of this video. So there it is, brood lift. Proof, you don't need a lot of brood, a lot of stores to get a colony away. As you can see, Graham, lots of activity again. Looks like the numbers are back up there again. More honey, more uh, food stores being created. But that uh, brood, that brood section is just thriving.